supercomputing technology and um, programming languages and algorithms that do simulations of these mathematical models will eventually have impact on the medical field. I strongly believe that. So far the impact has been minimum. And also the impact from advanced um, technologies that do, do not require supercomputing. And that's mostly related to the challenge and the complicated structure of physical phenomena in uh, human bodies. Supercomputing already has a real world impact in weather prediction, in climate, all the discussion about um, uh, the future of our planet are based on simulations and some observations, but we, we don't really cannot run an experiment which is a million years that we can see how the temperature will change in our planet. We have to do simulations. So already supercomputing and high performance computing have critical impact, economical and political, in, uh, in the way we, we live. Um, of course, the research problems that I'm focused in, like uh, mo modeling um, a heartbeat uh, or um, modeling the flow of blood in capillaries, it's only possible to the fidelity we seek very, very accurate simulations using these supercomputing technologies. Medical imaging, um, in some sense, uh, does. It provides this kind of information to physicians, but it's a very hard procedure to automate. That's why we have trained physicians. And there is a lot of data that is not used when radiologists, for example, interpret medical images like CT scans, computer tomography, MR images, or ultrasound. So we want to develop computational tools that do not replace the physicians, but assist the physicians in extracting useful information that can be uh, used for diagnosis and prognosis. So that's, that's the basic uh, uh, ultimate goal of our research. Now, this is a five, ten year uh, goal. We're we are starting in developing these tools. It's a very hard problem. Another project is um, using medical images, all this information that we get from clinical data set, to try to understand better the cardiac physiology, how uh, electric waves propagate in the heart, how the muscle contracts, what are the mechanisms in which the, the heart can fail, and all this hypothesis testing and understanding can be done using uh, again, high-performance uh, computing tools, and this is another aspect of my work. It's very, very difficult to write programs that do, do simulations of these complicated phenomena. So one of the biggest challenges that we have now is um, developing these programs for these big machines and developing a language that it's both efficient so that the machine actually can achieve its um, capabilities, but also it's easy for us to develop these programs, these complicated programs, maintain them, and also debug them, make sure that they are correct. So this is the biggest challenge in parallel languages, let's say, and algorithms for these machines. We're trying to uh, understand blood flow in uh, small vessels, capillaries. And uh, when I say understand blood flow, we want to answer questions, what are the the reasons that you can have initiation of thrombosis. Okay. And that is important because you want to design new drugs for thrombosis, you want to understand perhaps new stents uh, for a bypass surgery, new valves, mechanical valves. And typically these uh, artificial devices cause um, uh, thrombosis that basically create small thrombi that will go to the brain and can cause a stroke or something like that. So although there, is, there are a lot of experimental um, uh, work on trying to quantify this phenomena, we still have a qualitative understanding. So we want to put, let's say, create simulations that will have individual cells, platelets, white blood cells, and um, we'll try to put the deforming blood uh, vessel, and we're going to do a simulation to try to understand exactly what is the possibility of having a, a thrombus formation and allocation. So this is only possible, this is what's called direct numerical simulation, using petaflop scale machines. A third aspect of my work, as I mentioned before, was um, developing um, fundamental algorithms for mathematical physics, what's called partial differential equations, in which they're not really focused in one particular application, but are rather a class of problems. For example, despite the differences, the sum of equations modeled to uh, uh, used to model um, mantle convection inside the Earth are very similar to blood flow. So there is a 
Mathematics, mathematics offers a common framework and we're working on developing tools for such problems. Examples are adaptive mesh refinement, octree-based multi-resolution approximation for elliptic partial differential equations, etc. In this field of uh, red blood simulation and blood simulation, there, there has been a lot of work in numerical in algorithms. So three, it's like three years, around three years ago, we developed these algorithms that um, allowed a, um, fi a five orders of magnitude speed up. So basically that means a calculation that will take one year could take now, uh, could be done in one day or less. So that was uh, allowed um, uh, simulation of uh, hundreds and thousands of cells and uh, our work has been met with a lot of excitement by groups, biophysicists in, in France and here in the, in, in the United States and we have, uh, we have grown our group, we have five people working on this project right now, we have collaborations with experimentalists, so this is a very exciting trajectory for us. So I think uh, uh, this, tool, uh, this uh, tool has enabled new discoveries um, and this I think I consider to be uh, a part of my work that had the biggest impact.